But in the 1970s, when they were applying neurofeedback to epilepsy, it was Dr. Joel LeBar and a colleague that noticed that when they'd um, used neurofeedback training with a, an epileptic patient who also was hyperactive, the patient was less hyperactive after the neurofeedback training. So this prompted Dr. LeBar to investigate further how neurofeedback could help with symptoms of hyperactivity and later hyperactivity and attention deficit. And there's one study that he conducted around this time which has been described as seminal and probably wouldn't be allowed under today's ethical guidelines but it really does demonstrate the power of neurofeedback so it's worth going into a little bit more detail. They took several boys, all of whom had an ADHD diagnosis and conducted an experiment in three stages. Stage one was to apply the normal neurofeedback training to their ADHD symptoms and their symptoms improved. Stage two was to apply a reverse training protocol which actually reintroduced their symptoms. Now this is the part that wouldn't be allowed today. And stage three, thankfully for the boys and their parents, was to apply the original stage one protocol again and again it reduced their symptoms. Now this really does demonstrate the power of neurofeedback particularly when you consider that the boys were taking Ritalin during all three stages. Now this is probably one of the most fascinating studies on the use of neurofeedback for ADHD but it's not the only one and there's been lots and lots of studies um, published since then and some particularly strong studies within the last 10 years. In October 2012 the American Academy of Pediatrics which is the um, United States professional body for pediatricians revised their guidelines on evidence-based interventions for problems of attention and hyperactivity behaviours and they rated neurofeedback as a level one intervention, the highest possible rating. If you're interested in more information on how they reached this conclusion and the evidence that they used to reach that recommendation, you can download a free report from the Brain Train UK website. In the UK, the NHS and local authorities take much of their guidance from NICE. Now, NICE last reviewed the guidelines on ADHD in 2008 and issued them in 2009. And they describe the theory behind neurofeedback and make the observation that it's not widely used in clinical practice in the UK, but they really sit on the fence in terms of its effectiveness. Now, the American Academy of Pediatrics considered three key pieces of research to reach their conclusion. And one of them was a randomised controlled trial of more than 100 children with ADHD, which wasn't actually published until the end of 2009, so it wasn't available for the last NICE review. We're hoping that when NICE next review the evidence, they'll take this into consideration. Um, NICE also need to consider cost, and the reality is that neurofeedback is a more cost-effective option than medication because it delivers lasting effects. And of course, neurofeedback doesn't have the side effects that drugs have.